Check those out again. The steps were one through seven. Number one, X and Y intercept. Number two, asymptotes if it's rational. That's why we didn't have a number two up here. Three, first derivative test. Four, second derivative test. Five is make the table up. Six is make the points. And seven is graph it. So we're going to follow the same seven step process the whole way through. By the way, we are going to deal with some roots on this, so if you take your calculator out, I'm going to need some help calculator root um, from you on this. Okay, so x squared minus 1 over x cubed. Step number one hopefully the algebra type stuff, you find your x and your y intercepts. So we're, we're going to do every step together here. x intercept would happen where you set your function equal to 0. You follow me? Set your function equal to 0, and then you, you solve it. Well, if you set your function equal to 0, basically that's just where the numerator equals 0. The denominator if you equal zero is undefined. So we really just say, okay, well, if you, even if you want to think about it this way, multiply both sides by x cubed, you still get x squared minus one equals zero. What are my x intercepts? Say what? One and negative one. One and negative one. Very good. You add one, take the square root, or factor. Either way, you're going to get x equals one, negative one. Are you okay with that so far? You sure? So numerator equals zero, no problem. That's how you find your x-intercepts for any rational function. Numerator equals zero. You got it? Now, y-intercept. Y-intercept says you plug in x equals zero, and you find out an answer. What do you get when you plug in x equals zero? Negative one over that's a problem. That means there is no y-intercept. And we're going to find out why in step number two, but it does not exist. I'm going to erase little parts so we, we save space. But this is from x squared minus 1 equals 0. That gives us the 1 and negative 1. Step number two. Oh, step number two is a good one. Step number two is a good one. Step number two is where we find out all the asymptotes. Now, you might be thinking, who cares about asymptotes? Don't we have increasing and decreasing? The asymptotes tell you most of what you need to know for your graph. They really say, here's your, your sections. Here's what you're going to do in those sections. Basically, if you knew the asymptotes, you can almost guess what this graph is going to look like with just a couple numbers. So we're going to find our asymptotes, both vertical and horizontal. How do you find vertical asymptotes? Hmm? No, not derivatives. We don't do calculus till step number three, by the way. Good. When the denominator equals zero, you're going to have discontinuities, right? Those discontinuities are either holes, if you can cross them out, or asymptotes if you can't. So you'd say x cubed equals zero, and x has to equal zero. Can you cross out the x cubed with anything? So then what that says is there's a discontinuity. A vertical asymptote <coughs> occurs where x cubed equals 0. Or in other words, x equals 0. That's going to give us a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Now, let's carefully. If you were able to cross it out, you would do that. Okay, you cross out that discontinuity, you just keep in your mind that there's a hole there, all right? You'd have to identify the hole. So it's, it's a little bit easier to asymptote. You'd cross out the problem, you'd say there a hole exists at this point, and you put a hole in the graph. Does that make sense to you? That's what you would do. I think I've shown you how you do holes. Uh, I think I gave you x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. The hole would exist, actually minus 2. The hole would exist at... Uh, at 2, and then you would find that value, you put a little circle there, and it would just be an undefined little point. You follow me on that? Okay, so that's what you would do with holes. Most of the time, I'm going to give you asymptotes. Most of the time. You will have some holes, 
most time ascertains. How do you find horizontal? Limit. Yeah, you're right. A limit as what? As x approaches infinity. So really, there's two of them, right? you got to check both. Don't just assume that it's going to be the same. A lot of times it is, but we've seen cases where you have different horizontal asymptotes. Hey, do you remember how to take limits of, uh, of that stuff? I hope you do, because I, I think that's what your homework was on, right? <laughs> hope so. How do you take a limit as we approach positive infinity or negative infinity? Mm -hmm. Don't mumble it, say it. You divide by the biggest, uh, divide by the highest power mm -hmm. of the denominator. Very good. In the keyword, denominator. denominator, not numerator, denominator. So we would be divided by x cubed, both here and here. If we did that, it's going to look identical to this. You'll get x squared over x cubed, minus 1 over x cubed, all over <coughs> x cubed over x cubed. Can you see that this is going to go to 0? Yeah. Yes, no? Yeah. If you want the rest of it, here it is. I'll, I'm just going to do, I'm doing this one right here. You get 1 over x minus 1 over x cubed all over 1. True? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay. 1 over x, 1 over x cubed, 1. Tell me something, ladies and gentlemen. You need to know this. When x goes to infinity, what's this do? Zero. What's this do? Zero. What's this do? Zero. Stays at 1. That's 0 over 1. That's 0. Now, just think through it. Think through it. Is there going to be a difference if we go to negative infinity? This would still work, right? You still do that. You still have exactly this thing. You follow me? Now, take it to negative infinity. What's 1 over negative infinity? We would be over here right now. What's 1 over negative infinity? It's still 0. What's 1 over negative infinity? Zero. It's still 0. This would still be 0, and that's still a positive 1, because you're dividing x cubed by x cubed. No matter what it is, that's going to be a positive number, positive 1. You follow me on that? You sure? Yes, no? Yes. I see some nuts. They're like, mm. Questions? Are you okay that this is equal to 0? Yeah. Okay. If it was going <laughs> to negative infinity, so let, let me just change the problem here. Now let's say, aha, aha, aha. Does anything change? Is it still zero? So where are our horizontal asymptotes? Zero. Both left and right? Both left and right. So horizontal asymptotes occur at y equals 0, both positive and negative infinity. Would you mind if I erased this? Do you need it? So I, I've taught you how to do the limits. You do the limits. Um, also, you're going to hate me for just telling you this, but you can see it just by looking at the limit. Where's the power bigger, top or bottom? That's something over infinity, right? That's going to be 0. Where's the Power bigger, top or bottom? That's something over infinity. That's going to be zero. However, you want us. If I want you to show it. Yeah, I want you to show it. Yeah, but at least you can check your work really quick, right? <laughs> so this means as we're going to the right, we're going to zero. It's going to the left, we're going to zero. How many people feel okay with what we've done so far? Any calculus? Not really. Just limits. Let's start doing our step number three. What's step number three? Let's do our first derivative test. <coughs> Now, I know you all know how to take the first derivative, so I'm going to start doing these first derivatives a little bit quicker. Just stick with me on these derivatives. What you would do, take your quotient rule, and you're going to have this 
minus this. All over that square. Still okay so far? I guess I'll show the work if you really want me to. Low D high minus high D low, square at the bottom, and we're okay to go. X cubed times 2x minus x squared minus 1 times 3x squared all over x to the sixth. <coughs> yes, no? Yes. Okay, so basic derivatives actually. Uh, the, what you do with them later is kind of sucks, but basic derivatives so far. Y prime equals 2x to the fourth <coughs> minus 3x to the fourth plus 3x squared over x to the sixth. So far, so good. Distribute, deal with those signs. You see where the plus is coming from, I hope. Y prime equals negative x to the fourth plus 3x squared all over x to the sixth. Can you keep going? Can you factor, simplify? Yes, factor out an x squared. That is going to make your work later easier. Would you agree that that is your first derivative? Ladies and gentlemen, are you okay on your first derivative? <coughs> I've gone kind of quickly through that, but I'm assuming that at this point you can do a quotient rule and simplify it. You follow me? Not sure if you feel okay with it so far. Yeah. What is this? I know it's the first derivative. What is it? It's going to give us increasing, decreasing because this is a... It's a slope. And if slope is positive, you're increasing. If slope is negative, you're decreasing. If slope is zero, you have a potential relative max or min. You follow me? So what we're going to do for the first derivative test is you go, okay, now I want to set this equal to zero. And what we're going to do on this is pick out all the points that are undefined and all the points that have a zero. So can you please tell me for my critical numbers, that's what we're talking about here, for critical numbers, critical <coughs> numbers, <coughs> The first one I see is x equals 0. Where am I getting x equals 0, ladies and gentlemen? That tells you that, right? That says x equals 0 is an undefined point for your slope. That could mean that you're changing between increase and decreasing. Does it have to? No, but it could. It could mean that. Do you follow that? So you have to have the x equals 0. Make sure you have where the denominator equals 0 on your critical numbers and for your inflection points later. You've got to have that. Secondly, you're going to set the numerator equal to zero. That's the same idea as over there. It's very much like finding roots. Numerator equals zero is going to give you the actual numbers that makes your slope equal to zero. You follow me on that one? Okay, so if you want to multiply by x to the fourth, you would see the same thing, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Okay. How do you solve that? I would probably add x squared and then divide and then take a square root. And you could subtract three, divide by negative one, take a square root. It's just more work. Uh, but you're going to get, some, somehow, you're going to get x squared equals 3. True? Well, that means that more critical numbers occur at 